Hi, this is James Gordon Arturo Live here with the final book in the Arturo Terror series, the book I will be reviewing today. Death Bell by Guy and Smith. It has a, an awesome cover. I really like this. Alright, this is from Pocket Books, and this was first, this edition was from September 1981. This was a decent read. I read this book years ago, and I pulled this book out after the uh, horror anthology uh, Midnight Graffiti was not coming out too well, so I decided to uh, just basically screw it and went to the shortest horror book I got that I could finish uh, soon, so that way I'll have something to uh, wrap up this series uh, for near the end of the month of October, as I won't have time for anything else. So. Uh, anyway, this was a decent read. It, uh, this book has its moments. Uh, ha has some really good um, kill scenes, uh, gore, uh, a lot of br uh, brutal deaths as well. And um, I like the setting of the of the story. Like it's set like in this like small English countryside town during the winter. So I ha had a lot of good scenery. Uh, the worst of things I didn't like with this book. Uh, there's not really that many likable characters. Um, uh, and the synopsis kind of gives that uh, the main character that, that, that there's a main character well there's not really a main character this book follows multiple characters in this story so there's no really main character in it and I didn't like a single character throughout this story and I thought the the only I think the satisfaction that, that comes out of Death Bell is that you want to see these people die that's the whole point of this book is that there's no likable people in this town the whole you just want to see them get killed uh, and be driven insane by this Death Bell that's the only purpose uh, for this book so um, but overall it, 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 it I did enjoy it dis despite um, however despite that there were some things I didn't like with Death Bell but it was it was a decent read all right on to the book review Plot. In the countryside to Barry, new residents Mr. and Mrs. Hamilton, our heavy religious couple, have moved into the large house on top of the hill. Also with them is a Chinese girl who acts as their servant. Mr. Hamilton is arguing with his Mr. Hamilton is arguing with their paramount Reuben to install his Tibet bell into the tower at once, despite Reuben's rejections of the tower's old age and weather. After paying the repairman more money, he'll install the bell. The next day, Rubinson drives up the long road leading to Mr. Hamilton's house during the freezing cold winter. When he reaches the large house, which is blocked by an iron, a tall iron gate, Rubinson honks his horn a few times till the Chinese girl opens the gate, allowing him to drive his old truck inside. As Rubinson enters the large house, it feels more like a chapel, and it's much larger than the village church. It's it's a very old building with thick stone walls, and along with other strange relics that give Rubinson uneasy vibes. He enters the bell tower and begins repairing the ladder while removing bird nests. But as he gets closer to the large Tibet bell, he begins hearing voices along feeling uneasy being around the bell. After working for hours, Rubinson's had enough and tries to find Mr. Hamilton in the hall as he's arguing with his wife, furious as Mr. Hamilton orders him out of the room at once and has him leave. Rubinson decides to screw his contract with Mr. Hamilton as he never wants to set foot inside of that house again. However, Mr. Hamilton is able to bribe the repairman and within three weeks has the bell installed. During the following night, the village people hear the bell ring as it sounds more like a funeral bell and it causes some to cover their ears, unable to bear its sound, causing some of the residents to suffer from headaches or death for five minutes. The village residents begin complaining to the police of Mr. Hamilton's bell, which the chief of police goes to visit Mr. Hamilton. He refuses to open the gate as the officer forces Hamilton to open it. The officer explains explains the bell is causing problems with the village residents. However, Mr. Hamilton refuses to listen and orders the chief police to leave at once, but warns him he'll be ringing the bell at 10 p.m. As the residents go to church and pray for the for this madness to stop, right on cue the bell rings, giving everyone painful headaches and even causing some of the residents' ears to bleed. Rubison's wife kills herself, unable to stand the pain in her ears by smashing her head through the window, cu cutting her own throat, and another resident, a young boy, rams his head against the tree till he crushes his own skull. The following morning, the residents had enough and file a complaint demanding to have the bell taken down at once. This will take several days before the residents see justice. As the days go by, the bell continues to ring, which causes its residents to go insane or kill themselves. Fed up, the residents march up the road to Hamilton's house to force to remove the bell and get him out of Tiberi. However, 
After cutting the padlock off the gate and before anyone can set foot on Mr. Hamilton's front lawn, the bell the bell begins ringing so loud and so fast it drives them away as Mr. Hamilton watches and grins. Later on, some of the residents' ears begin to bleed with a few killing themselves while the rest attack a police officer who happens to find them wandering on the road as they rip him apart. Will the residents of Tuberi be able to stop Mr. Hamilton's evil plans before they are driven insane and turn on each other, or is it too late? Death Bell was a decent read, while highly detailed, of the quiet village with winter scenery, a large cast of characters of mostly annoying or unlikable characters that I didn't care for or waited for one of them to die in a brutal death. One thing I liked about Death Bell is its violence. A lot of scenes are brutal murders, gore, and scenes of mutilation. However, I felt the plot could have been better as the end reveal of why Mr. Hamilton brought the Death Bell to the Quiet Village didn't really make much sense, and a few other scenes that weren't explained well. Kinda wish Guy wrote a better plot for Death Bell and gave Mr. Hamilton a better reason why he came to the village and began causing terror to its residents. I also wish there were more likable characters as most were just middle-aged people who have nothing better else to do than drink, have sex, cheat on their wives or husbands while complaining about everything that bothers them. But at least the pacing was good as Guy doesn't add any unwanted filler or subplots, he just gets right to the main event of the story. However, if you want to read through a short horror novel about madness causing terror and destruction in the peaceful quiet town driving its residents insane, then you might like Death Bell, but don't go in expecting more from Death Bell, then you'll be disappointed. Overall, I highly recommend Death Bell if you just want to read a story of mindless violence plaguing a peaceful town to, s to see the carnage and mayhem a single Death Bell causes on its residents, then you'll enjoy this early 80s pulp horror novel. It it's a fun read. And that's our review today. Hope you all enjoyed it. And yeah, Death Bell was a decent read. It had its um, moments that I enjoyed and things I didn't like with it. Um, it had a lot of like gore, as I said. There's a lot of like brutal scenes of people just being brutally killed in this book, and and then you know the Death Bell causing the the residents to be driven into um, insane, which which they take their own li lives because they can't stand the the sound of the Death Bell. Um, one of my favorite death scenes in the book is when a character is um, taken to the church and the and, and he's tied and basically the um, the part of the bell that makes it ring is re is uh, removed and he's placed in it so that the people begin pulling on the rope and bashing his head into the bell so it, like it bursts open with blood dripping down. That was my favorite scene from the book. Um. But overall, like it was a decent read. Like I thought, the plot could have been better. The reveal why Mr. Hamilton uh, uh, came to the the town with this death bell it, it it didn't really make much sense to me. I was reading the, I was reading this and like, like what you you did this because because why? It, it was kind of a weird kind of plot, and I really didn't get it. And I even read it a second time, and I was like, okay, that this could I think this could have been well better executed if you ask me, but. It's a decent read. It's um, something you I, you expect of a Guy and Smith novel. Like, um, from what I heard from from his uh, other books, like the the Crab series, he's got uh, either somewhat likable or non likable characters. But the whole the, the the whole main thing of the of the of his, of his books is that you're just here to read people being brutally killed by monsters, creatures, or supernatural forces. That's what the main purpose of his books is, and. And I definitely like to check out some other Guy and Smith books because I heard his stuff is really good. Um, it's um, kind of similar to like Sean Hudson how he writes his books, where he has a lot of these characters and they're killed off in the most brutal ways that you could you could ever dream of. So I definitely will be checking out more Guy and Smith books in the future. Um, the the one thing I really did, the one thing that really annoyed, uh, kind of annoyed me a bit for this book was that most of the residents in the town of um, of, uh, in, the, in the book, they're just mostly these like middle-aged old people, and they're like all religious. So I was like, I don't like a single character, and I was just waiting for the Death Elder Ring to see uh, what would happen to one of them uh, being driven insane and just like either kill themselves or attack someone else in a brutal fashion because of the the Death Bell. That's all I was just waiting for. So that was like the one thing I I, I kind of found amusing with uh, with this book. Um, there were. Uh, other than that, there's not really much else. It's 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 you know it's a decent read. 
Alright, that's it for the review today. Hope you enjoyed it, and I will now begin uh, with my Dark Tower series. I'll begin reading the first book in the series. This is going to be a five-book series, so uh, this might take me a while. I don't know um, how long it will take me, because the rest, because this is a very thick series, so this is going to take me a while. It might take me to, I don't know, halfway through November, maybe, or even to December. I won't know, but... Well, actually, uh, I'll try to get through these books as much as I can so it doesn't uh, go all the way to December because i got a bunch of other stuff like to read. All right. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, share it, and don't forget to subscribe to Octor Library, the YouTube channel, and the Facebook group of the same name. And please support and review of fiction. Until then, I'll catch you later.